G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today we are going to be talking about some rising star prospects and going through each team's most likely candidate to win the rising star. Now there's probably only a few realistic candidates, but we're gonna go through each team and work out which player is most likely to give it a shake. Now for some teams, we're gonna be picking some players that are completely unrealistic. That being said, they're still worth keeping an eye out because they could easily get a nomination for the Rising Star Award without winning it. So how am I actually gonna do it? I'm gonna start talking about the guys in the order that I think they're likely to actually win the award whilst picking one player for each team. Now there is an important thing to understand before you watch this video, and that is the Rising Star has some very specific eligibility. I've made some Rising Star content this off season talking about, you know, different players who give it a shake. And occasionally I'll get the comments saying things like, you know, what about Will Ashcroft? What about Ruben Jinbi? And to clarify, neither of those players are eligible to win the Rising Star or get a nomination in 2024. So I will tell you exactly what the eligibility is for this video before we get into it. Before I do crack into it, if you could just make sure you subscribe to this channel, that'd be great, that'd be great. So straight off the AFL, website this is the eligibility for getting a rising star nomination or the award itself each year's nominated players must be under the age of 21 by the 1st of January and have played no more than 10 games at the start of this season. So Will Ashcroft played, I don't know, 15 games last year. Ruben Jimmy played about 17. So there's a lot of good quality players that won't be eligible for this award. But without further ado, let's start talking about the clubs and their best individual prospects. I'm gonna start with the guy who I think is most likely. This is not based on betting odds. This is my personal opinion. And I'll say for North Melbourne, that player is Colby McKercher. Even amongst North Melbourne, that is not necessarily a safe bet because Colby McKercher is also going to be competing with George Wardlaw and Zane Dersma. My personal opinion is that Colby McKercher is the best chance, but North is the one team where I think you could pick out a number of serious candidates all from the one club. George Wardlaw could absolutely win it. I just think Colby McKercher is more likely to have a really high volume Harry Sheasel like season. I think he was definitely one of my favorite players in his draft. I think he's got the skills to stand out. He's gonna win up plenty of the ball and Wardlaw's playing in a harder position and has you know some injury concerns as well. So I'm gonna say McKercher, but Wardlaw is also a really red hot chance to give it a shake. I think the next most likely might be Harley Reid. Reason being, you know, playing behind the footy, I think he's gonna have plenty of opportunities to play a little bit like Sheasel. I don't expect him to win as much of the footy, but he can still be really impactful. And he's done that at senior level in his junior year as well. So I think Harley Reid is, is a serious candidate for this and the clear choice for West Coast. Some of their other good players, Noah Long, Jinbi, and uh, Elijah Hewitt all played too many games. Only other one that I think could at least get a nomination is probably Ryan Marrick. I think he's a bit of a jet, but not a serious chance to actually win the award. For the Western Bulldogs, I've got them having the third most likely in my opinion, and that is Riley Sanders and the Lark medalist from last year's national championships. Again, he's a little bit of a different beast here because he's gonna be probably playing as an inside mid, but he is quite ready made could conceivably win the award. A serious red hot chance. I suppose the only reason I've sort of got to drop him down a little bit, I think he's going to be playing a harder role than the two guys ahead of him and therefore less likely to get rising star nominations, but seriously could still win it. The next most likely, and this is starting to get pretty subjective. It's a little bit hard to pick after those three in my opinion, but I'd say Adelaide's Daniel Curtin. I think because of the role that I expect him to play as a taller behind the ball player, as an intercept player, the fact that he can win plenty of the footy and when I say plenty, I mean, you know, he could be pushing 18, 19 touches a game. I think that's enough to be a serious contender. He uses the ball so well. He's physically developed. I think he could easily establish himself as best 22 at Adelaide and still a decent chance to, to win the award if he has a really good season. So Charlie Edwards is probably another candidate for them, but that would probably be a more of a, a long shot. That would be a surprise if Charlie Edwards really came in and gave the Rising Star a good shake. For Melbourne, I'm gonna say Caleb Windsor is the next most likely. Colton is probably the next most, but I think there's going to be a fair gap in what I expect in output from those two players. I think Caleb Windsor could really stand out with his speed and skills. He's one of the most, I use this word hesitantly, attractive footballers to watch, like his speed and his skill. Um, his cleanliness is, is really entertaining to watch. The only thing that works against Caleb Windsor is probably a proven ability to rack up the footy. And that might be what sets, you know, someone like a McKercher or even dare I say it, a Harley Reid and a Sanders above Windsor. If he's getting 14, 15 touches a game, but looking red hot, it's probably not enough to win the award. But if he's getting 18 or 19, that's where he really becomes a serious chance. After that, I've got Essendon's Elijah Sardis. Again, another play with some injury issues, but I could easily see him slotting in and winning plenty in the football as an 
inside mid. Again, a little bit of a harder role potentially, but nonetheless a realistic chance. Nate Caddy is also a pretty good contender as well. I wouldn't say there's a huge gap between Sardis and Caddy. I know that Caddy is a key forward and they take longer. Having said that though, I do think he has shown an ability to play higher at the ground. He has played a little bit on ball as a junior and I don't think he's going to be a midfielder next year, but we could see him at least sort of playing as a little bit of a higher forward and, and maybe moving the ball inside 50 and getting opportunities that way. I'm a big fan of Nate Caddy. I think it's not crazy that he's a top five rising star chance. For Hawthorne, I think there's one most clear candidate and that's Nick Watson. Uh, if he comes in and plays as a small forward, I'm not sure how likely it is he plays round one, but I, I think there's a decent chance from the outside looking in. He's got the attributes to do well early. He can be high volume. He, he can push up the ground. He's played on halfback. He's played in the midfield and he can win 25 touches in a game, no sweat. Is he going to do that in his first year at AFL level? I'm probably a little bit hesitant. I think he could be a player that gives us a lot of highlights in his first season, but that's different to being a genuine rising star contender. So he's still, you know, in this mix, what have I got him in the seventh favorite or something like that? But I'm a little less sure how he's going to be used in his first season, hence my hesitancy there. The next one is probably Henry Husswaite. Probably good enough to get a nomination this year, but, you know, he'd be coming from a long way back to give it a serious shake. Geelong is next with Jai Clark, a good young inside mid who just played the one game last year, I think, due to injury issues. I think there's opportunities for him to crack into this Geelong midfield if Geelong apply the philosophy of trying to get games into some of these kids because Jai Clark is a good young prospect and I think showed a bit in his only game at AFL level. They've also just drafted Connor O'Sullivan. Key position defenders will find it a little bit harder to poll well in the Rising Star votes because it is done by votes at the end of the year. I mean, he could get a Rising Star nomination. I contrast him a little bit to Daniel Curtin. I think Daniel Curtin could be sort of like a taller running defender to start and O'Sullivan's more of like a high marking interceptor at his best. So I think he's coming from a little bit further back. So Jai Clark is probably their best chance, which then leads me to St Kilda's best chance. And I think that's probably Darcy Wilson. Again, I think a lot of their young players like Philippou, for instance, has played too many games. So Darcy Wilson is the most talented next guy who could get a Rising Star nomination. I saw David King talking him up. Uh, he went to their training at St Kilda, apparently looking a million bucks. And that doesn't surprise me. He's a very fast, skillful sort of player. Going to get opportunities. Not a major contender for the award, I think, but a good quality prospect that I like. For Gold Coast, um, this one is fairly obvious, I think, in Jake Rogers. Now, it's not Jed Walter because if you're unaware, I believe Jed Walter just did a somewhat serious injury and is not going to be available for a, a decent period of 2024. Also a key position forward, I think was probably a decent chance to be a contender this year, but I don't think he's going to play a whole lot of footy. Might, maybe at the back end he gets a nomination. But Jake Rogers is a smaller midfielder. Again, I'd be surprised if he's a major contender, but I could be wrong. Lewis Taylor won it in 2013 as a pretty small sort of high half forward midfielder. Maybe Jake Rogers can do the same thing. I think he's proven an ability to play well against big bodies like he was one of those players that played in the AIS team against mature teams so I could be wrong but again I don't know how likely it is he genuinely gets games in a Gold Coast team that is starting to mature for GWS um, either of their two first draft picks this year are uh, somewhat likely. So Phoenix Gothard was the first and James Leake was the next. So I'd probably go with Phoenix Gothard because they obviously seem to really rate the kid. And you know, he's a chance to be playing in his first season. So again, I'd, it's hard to assess how likely it is he gets games. And second of all, as a small forward in the same sort of logic as Nick Watson, how many times is he touching the footy a game? He might kick two goals and have seven touches. But if he does that, you know, every second week, that's probably not going to result in a genuine rising star shake. Then we've got Sydney, and the probably clear option here is Angus Sheldrick. Now, the reason I don't have him higher is not because I don't rate him. It's just that when you get into your third year and he's played nine games in his first two seasons, the voting does sort of discriminate a little bit against third year players. So unless he has a, a massive season, uh, he's coming from a little bit further back and at the end of the day has only played the nine games. So I do think a good long-term player, but not a serious chance. The other one I considered is Caden Cleary, taken in the second round, small inside mid. Again, you know, Errol Goulden gave it a good shake in his first season. He had a terrific first season, probably a bit more of an outside player than Cleary. But again, I'm coming from a bit of ignorance there with Cleary. For Carlton, I think their best chance is probably Ashton Moyer. Now, Lockie Cowan is still eligible and has played at AFL level and has shown some decent signs without really locking a spot into that 22. Otherwise, he wouldn't be eligible. Uh, but Ashton Moyer, I don't think is a massive chance for it, but he is really talented and could be a bit more of a boomer must type. So if he fulfills his potential and has a cracking season, it's not beyond the realms of possibility. He gives this award a real shake, but there is also the chance that he doesn't quite fulfill it in his first season. That's obviously highly likely. So again, not completely out of the realms of possibility, but not 
overly likely either. Uh, Fremantle, again, I think they've gone two years in a row without a first round draft pick. So their stocks here were a little bit bare and that you, that's going to be a trend for the, a lot of the teams coming up. But Cooper Simpson, their recent draftee, I think he was their first pick at pick 35. I've heard good things about how he's going at training and has some really nice attributes. So good chance to get a nomination, but I'd be pretty shocked if he gives the award a good shake. That being said, he does have some really nice attributes, so it wouldn't be the craziest thing. Now with Richmond, they've gone two years in a row, only taken a couple of kids like in the 40s and 50s. So picking out one leading candidate was tough. You've actually got to go back to 2021. All of Tyler Sonzi, Tom Brown, and Sam Banks are still eligible because they haven't played enough games. So from what I've heard, Sam Banks is probably the leading candidate there. Tom Brown also wouldn't shock me. Uh, and I'm not really too sure where Tyler Sonzi's at. So I'll say Sam Banks is their best chance, followed closely by Tom Brown. They've only played six and one game respectively. I think Sonzi's played 10. We're going to see that these kids play this year and they could all get nominations, but Sam Banks probably the most likely. With Collingwood, I think they've got two main candidates here. One of them is their big bodied prospect in Ed Allen, and that's probably the one I'd go with. Again, I haven't really tracked his progress in his first year at Collingwood there, and it might be tough for him to get a gig. Harry Demetier is probably the next one. He was their first pick in 2024 and could come in as a role player, you know, off half back, off half forward, probably a little bit small to be playing serious midfield minutes for Collingwood this year out of thought. So both of these guys are massive long shots. And in particular, Allen is going to be a long-term player, you would imagine. A bit more of a project midfielder. For those Finley McRae fans out there, he's not eligible. I'm sorry. Then we go to Brisbane here. And obviously, a team that has a fair bit of young talent now because of Will Ashcroft and Jasper Fletcher as father-sons, neither are eligible. So you've got to go a little bit deeper than that. And outside of those picks, where they had to use up a lot of picks that it got absorbed for points for these players, they haven't really taken high picks outside of that. So Kai Lohman is probably their best chance to get a rising star at least a nomination. The other one is their first pick, Logan Morris. But again, I'm, I don't really know too much about him. So I, I'm going to say with Kai Lohman, at least will be a decent chance to get a nomination. Whereas Logan Morris, I don't know if he's even going to get a game this year. And that leads us to our final club who has really not invested in first round draft picks for a little while now. So picking out a play here was a little bit of a raffle. And I've picked out two. I'd say Tom Scully, the 204 centimeter key forward, not the former Hawthorne Melbourne GWS midfielder. Tom Scully, uh, the only reason I picked him over someone like Will Lorenz, who I did like pre-draft, is that I think Tom Scully does have a lot of talent, but seemed to fade badly in his draft year. So again, that one's a little bit of a stab in the dark, but maybe Tom Scully is their most likely, who knows? Other than that, you're getting into names like Charlson, I think was one of them, Anastasopoulos from the recent draft. But, but again, we're in really long shot territory there. But that is every team in the AFL's best chance, in my opinion, of winning the Rising Star Award in 2024. But let me know in the comments what you agree with and disagree with. It would be great to hear from some fans, particularly about some of the ones I wasn't sure about. I'd love to get your input. Richmond fans, what do you think of Sam Banks versus Tom Brown? Port Adelaide fans, tell me something about other young prospects that I don't know. But as always, I appreciate you watching. Hope you got something out of this video and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Cheers.